Well, Martre has been done to death, and for good reason, because it's one of the most popular and beautiful locations in Paris, one of the most unique. It's like a village. But just because it's been done to death doesn't mean you can't do it again, doesn't mean you can't do it well the first time or the 20th time, however many times you want to come to Montmartre. I mean, I've been here like a million times. It's phenomenal. Here's Paris in My Pocket's first of probably many guides to how to do Montmartre, but today is a day in Montmartre. Let's see if we can't maximize this and get the most out of it possible. Now, while most people are gonna start their trip to Montmartre by going straight up to Sacré-Cœur, I'd argue that you might wanna get, I don't know, coffee or something to eat before you go all the way up there. And the best place to start for that is gonna be Pigalle. A lot of people will get off at Anvers on line two, but you can get out at Pigalle on line two or 12, or go all the way up to Abbes, one more stop on line 12, which will save you the trouble of, you know, having to go all the way or at least halfway up the hill. From here, we're gonna go up. There are two spots that we could go, two streets that we could take to go get ourselves something to eat and some coffee. We'd go to Silon de Montmartre, which is one of my favorite coffee shops in the city. If you got somebody in your crew who's kind of sick of French pastries for whatever reason, or maybe you just wanna see how the French are dealing with the evolution of the non-French pastry, then you can come give the donut a try at Dr. Donuts, which is just down the hill from Silon de Montmartre. Unfortunately, I did try to film this on a Sunday morning to get a little bit more space and calm in the morning, especially because Paris doesn't really open up on Sunday mornings. It's very, very slow moving. But of of course, that means some of the places that I'm trying to go aren't open despite being marked online that they are open. So take that as a, as a, as a word of caution as well. Just because a place says that they're open on Google Maps or even on their own Instagram account, that yeah, doesn't mean they're gonna be open. It's Paris. Things, things are always closed, which is why I'm gonna give you alternative locations as well. As we wander up the hill, there are a couple of options for coffee and for pastries. We went to Pain Pain. Pain Pain is a, it's just fun to say, Pain Pain, bread, bread. Kind of halfway up the hill, it's right by Abbes on the same level if you were to get out at Abbes. And they're just kind of like a wonderful modern take on all the French classics, right? It's a very brightly lit, brightly colored, wonderful little location on the corner. And I got a Chasson aux Palmes this morning with the Hanel. So it's a cinnamon Chasson aux Palmes. Chasson aux Palmes is kind of like the classic pastry that I go to to test to see how good I think a bakery is. We decided to bring our pastry up here to the Mur Je Tem, or like the I Love You wall. And it's covered in I Love You in all kinds of different languages, which is pretty famous. This guy's very interested in uh, birds. Also, dogs technically aren't allowed in this park. Cooper, what are you doing in here, buddy? Breaking the rules. Of course, if you don't have a dog, this is a fantastic park to come and sit and have like a little mini picnic, which is what I'm doing now with my pastry, as well as just like maybe even lunch. I came here with my friend Lisa once. We ate burritos, sat, watched people come through. It's a great spot to stop, take a load off, and then can continue on. This is really tasty. I just wish there was more cinnamon in this country. When you're done taking your photos at the I Love You wall, of course, then take a stroll up Rue La Vieuxville. It's uh, got lots of nice little shops and is the beginning of our zigging and zagging up the hill. You can go that way too, but today we're going this way. If you're walking up Rue La Vieuxville, it's really nice because it's full of little shops. There's some really good ice cream up near the top, of course, and it's just, you know, quaint. Lots of little things. For getting up the hill, you have two options. You can zig and zag and wander your way up these delightful streets that do tend to zig and zag, or you can cut straight up by stair. That's gonna be the fastest way up, but you might miss some things along the way. I always discover something new when I'm walking along here. But either way, whether or not you actually take the stairs, don't forget to take advantage of the stairs because at the top of them, you tend to find nice little shots that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get however it is that you get up to the top. Of course, Place Emile Goudot offers a really nice, quiet location. On the corner of that and Rue Garou, you'll find, uh, you know, a classic little cafe as well. Not really my style. I'm looking for, you know, like really good coffee. However, being able to sit here and look out over the city a little bit, it can be really nice. So maybe stop here and have a coffee if that's what you're into. It's not what I'm into though. Let's keep going. Right around the corner, up the hill, it's clear up. They're very friendly. They speak phenomenal English. And uh, one of Cooper's favorite toys is like a Yeti that's made by a French company. See if I can find one for you. So this is a, it's a chew, lactose-free cheese chews. It's the Frenchest dog treat you could possibly get. Cooper loves these, he chews on them incessantly. So if a plush toy is too big or whatever else, uh, this is a very affordable French treat to bring your uh, favorite four-legged fluffy friend at home. Of course, now that you've gotten your favorite dog, a cheesy chew as a souvenir from Paris, it's time to wander up through the more touristy section on top of the hill. You can check out Place du Tertre and eventually end up at Sacré-Cœur, of course. Place du Tertre is also known as the Artist's Square, easier to say than Tertre. 
which I might not be saying right myself. And it's a phenomenal spot to get like a portrait done. Of, if you want to spend 20 euros on a little portrait of yourself to bring home to your grandma, it's a good place to do it. And then of course, Sekakura itself is super, super worth it. I love the church. It, it's, it's my second favorite church in the city, but my favorite church that's available to view right now since Notre Dame is out of commission. It's beautiful on the inside, quiet. Definitely offers a really good opportunity to, you know, just decompress and think about otherworldly things for a minute while you're in the midst of your time in Paris. And then obviously offers one of the nicest views of the city, both from the top and from the front. And if you wander off to the side a little bit, off to the right, you'll find a nice little view of the Eiffel Tower through the trees as well, right next to a little puppy park. A lot of puppy stuff going on today. And of course, come to Square Marcel in the back for this view if you want it. It's a tip that I've been throwing in a lot of videos just because it's really nice and underappreciated. It's a quiet park. I'm the noisiest part of it right now. If you don't count the birds. And it's a great place to kick your feet up, just take a moment, relax, have a picnic, or, you know, just have a breather before we head down the hill from here to check out Bobby, an Italian wood-fired pizza oven that I cannot wait to give a try. Just down the hill from Sacre-Cœur, you can come down almost directly and run into Bobby, brand new Italian restaurant that makes very seasonal Italian classics and their pizza, the dough, they age it for 36 hours before they make it into pizza. I haven't eaten it yet, but I've heard good things. I'm really excited. The layout, the interior is really nice. I think it's just generally pretty glorious. The Nduja is always a really nice touch. Like it's got spice to it, but I don't want to overhype the crust, but this might be among my favorite pizza crusts in Paris. Soft, just the right amount of crisp. Ruin Napolitan pizza, especially because it's got like um, a little bit of that sourness to it. It's tasty. They score really big points for like environment, the way they've designed the place. The staff are super nice. The pizza's really good. The location's amazing. I'll be back. After lunch, of course, you don't really want to stay, you know, at the restaurant to have coffee. They will offer it. I wouldn't go for it. Just down the street is Devotions. It's a really nice coffee shop opened by some friends who used to work for Queer. She used to be part of Belleville. It's really nice. Some little pastries and stuff. You can sit inside or you can sit outside and get a little bit of sun. And uh, it's a delightful little local Montmartre cafe that not a lot of people know about. And it's the perfect way to caffeinate yourself before you head up the hill if you don't want to go all the way up to Saint Marsh, which is where we're gonna go as well to get more coffee, but now you have alternatives. Oh, wow, that's really nice. They also roast their own coffee, and it's really good. This is an Ethiopian. Oh, delicious. Merci beaucoup. So we're doing our afternoon coffee, quote unquote movie magic, but the afternoon coffee here in, in, uh, at, at Les Cinq Marches, or the five steps. And I believe it's because there are five steps to get down here from the street by Rue Becquerel. And the reason I chose Becquerel as the, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, as the route is because it takes you by some really nice stuff, like the Vigne de Clos, the uh, very famous Montmartre vineyard, which can't vouch for the wine. Might not be very good. No, I'm still too scared to try it. This is also where you're gonna find the famous pink house, La Maison Rose. I don't know why it's famous still. I think it's just because it's pink, but um, people love it. It's a chocolate chip cookie that's got some salt on top, which is really nice. So like, um, kind of like a Sablon influence. Like it's a little bit sugar cookie-y, chocolate chip cookie based. Really nice. Cooper and I have decided to stop in for a little bit of an apéro here. An apéro, apéro, uh, an aperitif is the drink that you have before dinner. So if you're with a French family, especially on the weekend, often you sit down, have drinks and snacks before you even sit down at the table. It's one of the few times in my life with my French friends or my ex and her family where we actually had snacks. It was great. We're at Le Barbilon, which is on the far side of Montmartre, down halfway down the hill or most of the way down the hill near Jules Joffrin. It's a wonderful spot to stop in. Once you're done looking around at the cemetery and you want to come in, refresh and you know, reflect on the brevity of life and the glories that it's given you. Good spot to do it. They've got a handful of taps. They've got some other beer, I think. They've got a selection of natural wine and beer that you can take to go. And remember that it is legal in France to have a drink outside, like in a park, if you want to bring a beer or a bottle of wine for a picnic. I ordered their uh, truffle grilled cheese just to give it a try and see how it is. But they've got some planche, so like charcuterie, cheese and meat if you want to sit and have a longer snack. Or, you know, just have a drink and then carry on. And tonight, I hope you made reservations because we've got a big dinner planned. 
And thanks to today's Patreon producer, Heather Hilton, for sending me out here and all my patrons for making this possible. It wouldn't happen without you. These videos would not happen without my patrons. So if you enjoyed them and you'd like to, if you'd like them to continue, Cooper's moving the furniture, uh, consider becoming a patron. Patreon.com slash Jay Swanson. Moving on. If you take the nice, gentle, winding avenues you know up the hill, you're gonna find a nice little private road here. It doesn't always have a car flashing its lights in it to help you out, but is next to uh, the real estate agent by the same name as the street. I've exchanged my dog for a jacket, as you may have seen, and I hope you've made reservations because we're going to dinner at the Hotel Particulier Montmartre. You do need to find the buzzer to get in. You can't just get in on your own because it is very, very private. You don't have a key. Buzz, if you can't figure out the buzzer, you're gonna miss your reservation. And of course, if you do find yourself waiting for a little while for your dinner compatriots to arrive, or you're just early, like me, don't forget to check out Villa Leandre right next door. It's a tiny little street, cute little houses. It's adorable. Also, check out this view just outside the gate. Dying. Took a minute to make a jambon beurre out of this. We got the plate of ham to share. It's good, Corsican ham. Hotel Particulier is reputed to be the most exclusive hotel in the city. It only has five rooms, each one individually designed by a different artist, so it looks and feels very different. And it used to be the kind of place that like the A-listers would come to stay in Paris, you know, and it was, you could never get in here unless you were super, super cool, like we are. I know we really are. But the thing is that a few years ago or a while back, they did open up a restaurant and a bar, a cocktail bar, which unfortunately we're not gonna be able to get into tonight because it's temporarily closed. It's pretty phenomenal. I got the uh, veal shoulder. There's some octopus on the table and a coquette of coquette de legume, which has like freshly sliced truffle on top of it, which looks amazing. And mine came with a side of puree. This is gonna be phenomenal. It's, even, it's not even that bad on the price points. I'm sure the wine gets way up there. The wine list is probably really good, but this looks really good. I will give the I will give this a try on camera. Wow, okay. Just has a French classic feel to me on this. They do change the menu depending on the season. It usually is a seasonal menu as I understand. And if you do want to try and get one of these hotel rooms, good luck to you, but you can just come up and enjoy it in the secret private garden at the top of Montmartre. It's a great spot to have dinner. So light and fluffy and flaky at the same time. Oh my God. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's position it. Not even mic'd up. Hopefully, this is loud enough. It's really good dessert. We got Holy the chocolate mousse and the bourbon that? vanilla. Like, it looks like a meal foy, but I don't remember what it was called because they gave us the English one. Uh, who cares? It's delicious. No evening in Montmartre would be complete without a stop at the local corner bar, and we've decided to come to La Bascule this evening for a beer. And of course, you could have some wine or a cocktail. Just a local haunt. Usually is vibe, and of course, Sunday night, it's not bouncing quite as hard, but we had a great time here this evening. I hope you enjoyed this day in Montmartre and that you can recreate it if you feel like it, or of course, do it in whatever way you please, but there's so much you can do here, so much soul and spirit on the hill. Thanks to my patrons for making this possible. Thanks to you for watching it, and make sure to check out ParisInMyPocket.com for the guide that will change your entire trip in Paris. What up? Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs>